Welcome back to Paradise Killer. In the last episode, we talked to God for a bunch. He seemed like a kind of a whiner, but, uh, you know, we're not going to speak too badly of the guy. He's been trapped inside and having bits of him ripped off for quite a while, so, uh, you know, cut him some slack. Rose in the Rain Residences, Luxury Apartments for Syndicates. This, I th I, yep, this is where we can meet um, witness to the end. He's up there somewhere. And that's what we're probably going to do today. But it's going to be a bit of a long talk. So let's look around this little world we've got here first. We'll go over there when we're done. Ill-fated pleading letter. A mother pleads for mercy. Her son transgressed. Love between the syndicate and citizens is expressly forbidden. Interesting, because... Um, I'm not sure who this is talking about. Uh, I, I guess it could be... Um, uh, I guess it could be Voth's mom talking about her son and Akiko. Uh, I, I can't think of anyone else it could be, unless, you know, I only met a couple of the, of the members of the Syndicate, so maybe there were others that were doing some naughty stuff as well. So here we can see there is a rather complicated set of paths uh, to go where you want to go. I really love that. I really love when you can see lots of different ways to get where you're going. This is something you see a lot in, you know, games like um, Aliens. Uh, the, the most recent Alien Isolation game did it pretty well as well. But in our case, uh, there's no aliens hunting us. We're the ones doing the hunting. Up we go. I don't see any easy to access loot from here. Nothing obvious. It's really easy to um, to get distracted by the fact that you can just keep going and not properly look around, right? And that's one thing I excel at, not going the right direction. That's, that's my forte. But now that we've gotten, given it a look, let's go on up. Up, up, up. As we enter into the more residential areas of this um, city, we're going to find more and more places that are um, vertical, that have a lot of vertical elements. This is definitely one of the highlights of that in terms of just the number of rooftops connected in the most complicated ways they can try and figure out. But there are plenty of other places where the verticality is uh, no joke. I like that, but it does tend to get a little confusing um, in situations like this. It also gets confusing when my mic cord keeps getting stuck on stuff, and that's uh, going to make it difficult for me to actually do anything if I can't turn my head. Now we're uh, we're headed over there, and uh, we could take the elevator, but why take the elevator? Oh, no worries. That fall didn't cur didn't put us back very far at all. And even if it did, we could have just taken the elevator. But I don't want to take the elevator. I want to do this the old-fashioned way. Climbing. You can see some more verticality over there. We're going to have a look-see at that eventually. Here's some loot down here. Oh, this is actually his apartment. No? No, I think this is just behind the elevator. Let's take a look here. Aromatic mushroom. Nothing special about that. Doesn't even get you high. This is how we would go up, but let's talk to the computer first. It should be able to tell us who went up and who went down, and this is a rather important thing to know. You can see it's just Goat and Cosmos. They have The idea here is that you're able to get this pretty quick. Um, you don't have to wait a decade to try and figure it out. The only question is which of the various planetary silhouettes it is. There we go. Then back up to Goat for some ram horns, and then back over to Cosmos for a star in front of a planet. How does it do that? There we go. Now this will tell us who came into the building last night and when. So Witness came in, because it's his apartment. Then Carmelina arrives at 11 p.m., an hour before the crime. And at 2358, 
just as the crime is happening, the God Justice Marshals arrive. So Witness and Carmelina both exit 20 minutes later. So that says that both Witness and Carmelina work together at the top of this building during the crime. At least that's what it seems to say. But as we know, if there's an alibi, our job is to crack it. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trying to figure out how that alibi could have been cracked. I guess we'll just take the elevator up, but let's talk to Shinji. I feel like I could talk to you all day. Everything, nothing, you know how it is, I'm feeling quite relaxed. That's why you're in this situation. Too many people take things too seriously. They don't have to think about others, just their own advancement. That isn't how a perfect society runs. I come from a place where everyone in the government is looking to scapegoat you for their own cruelty and fuck-ups. Yeah, yeah, I know how that feels these days. There we are. Up we go. I don't actually know whether you can reach the top of this building without using the elevator. I've never tried. It would be a climb, I'll tell you that. Polite luxury talk chocolates, the standard gift given to the host when syndicate members visit each other. I think it's cute that they have like a standardized way of doing that. So this is how high we are right now. That's where we were just a few seconds ago. You might recognize it right down there. But now we are up on top of the building and I don't see any easy staircase to get up here. So yeah, uh, the top of the building is very simple. It's just a donut around a central area, but there are two major things that we need to look for. One of them is back here. We're always poking around in people's back doors and taking a look at their secrets. Yeah, there's a lot of secrets here. Shall we take a look? So, Crying Grudge is Witness's... I don't know if it's a Witness's favorite god, because he vivisected him, but uh, he is certainly one of Witness's most notable crushes. He's got some plants. Witness to the end tends to grant or gift people hard to care for plants because he's an ass. Witness to the end's phones. Okay, so I just grabbed his phone so I can verify where he was. We can do that, we'll do that later, but the short of it is that he was here. The Holy Catalyst and Relics. Persia, that's where it's from. I was trying to remember where those those um, particular statues are from. and They just said it was Persia, and that sounds right. Oh, it lets us track Akiko's position, not Witness to the End's position, that's interesting. There's Witness to the End. He kind of looks like a Toreador. Um, we're not going to talk to him just yet, though. Well-loved Secateurs. A craftsman tools are a thing of beauty. The grip has been worn to a perfect fit. These are plant-carrying tools. They, they are for trimming bonsai trees and the like. And that's something that he does. It's his way of focusing and uh, showing his devotion which he likes to do. He's a big, devoted guy. Now, one thing you may have noted while we've been running around up here is that there is no other exit uh, and no other entrance. You can go inside, but you can't go downstairs or upstairs any way except the way we came in, right here. There's no other doors or staircases. If Carmelina or Witness had left this location, even if they had done it by jumping off, they wouldn't be able to get back in without taking the elevator, and that would have been logged. So we do know that, as far as we can tell, there is absolutely no way for anybody to get up here except through the elevator, and therefore they were both here the whole time. And I'm nuzzling this wall, because some of you may have played the game before. To the end. Hey there, Witness. What you up to? Overseer of each dying paradise, born in the Chaos Palace in northern Iran in AD 981, one of the oldest of us, under the sign of the destroyed Eden. As a child, Witness was enslaved under the banner of a crying grudge and put to work building the perpetually growing Chaos Palace in North Persia. During the Great Betrayal, Witness refused to budge in his devotion, fleeing to hide within the impossible labyrinth of the Chaos Palace. Ezekiel found Witness and urged him to follow him. They became close. Witness was still a young man, and Ezekiel was older and wiser. Witness looked up to him as a father figure, and uh, yeah, so on and so forth. 
Witness holds a great deal of responsibility overseeing the end of each island. He ensures every failure is perfect. He collects and breeds rare plants in his penthouse. <laughs> Good to see you again, Witness. Apologies for Starlight. I do remember you. How long has it been since you last did work for our holy masters? Time moves so strangely here. We are grains of sand that drift in the astral wake of heavenly titans. Especially after last night, the island is ready to end. The time flow is broken. The gods are displeased. We are supposed to be their loyal servants, our only purpose to resurrect them. Now we squabble and scheme. Our holy work brought to a screeching halt by murder. Bum bum bum. The end times are looming. So many have strayed from the path. This must be a sign from the gods. I'm glad to be back. Lady Love Doys. I can see it in you, Lady Love Doys. The fire of holiness. I live in fear of the rage of the cosmic deities. Maybe you can quell their anger. That's strange. What's with the holy proclamations? This isn't your usual style. You know, from three million days ago. Far too much has happened in your absence. Truths have become much more mutable. Our masters are not being served. The syndicate has lost its way. I have not strayed from the path. Too many of us have forgotten what it means to serve our masters. I fear last night was one of our punishments. So as a reminder, Witness of the End has been breeding demons in the dead zone and was responsible for getting a demon snuck into the council chamber and uh, attacking the council with it. So this is not a mystery to us. And I'm not sure how many people meet Witness to the End before they know that he's like a guy that raises demons in his spare time. So if you don't know that by the time you talk to him, then you might come away with a very different sort of impression of him. But for anybody who knows that he's been raising demons, yeah, yeah, his, his zealotry has crossed quite a few lines. Are, the gods the Surely this is a judge. Are you here to punish the wicked monster that committed this atrocity? Uh, do you mean the demon or you? The end times are or red herring, maybe. Yeah, he's talking about red herring here. This island is full of sinners. A holy man should be allowed to do his holy work. He's upset that Judge put the island's destruction on hold. Because he's here to see the island destroyed. And if it's not being destroyed, there's really no point. He's wasting his time. Want to chat? I must warn you that I'm not one for long conversations. The gods are watching us. Do you think they're happy with what they see? Probably not. This is full of they are the calm eye of the storm, and we have fallen away from them, swept in a way, swept away in a monsoon of sin. Now, presumably, he started to radicalize himself after his failed romance with Carmelina a decade ago. Um, I guess that can happen to a guy, or maybe that's why she left him because he was getting weird. We're doing a little prayer to the silent goat here, and uh, he just kind of is here to show us what the religious side of the island is like. Most of the people we've talked to so far are not overly religious, even though the island is entirely about worshipping dead gods, we didn't really get to see much of that, because the council themselves doesn't really do much worship. They mostly kind of gather the worshippers together, because the point is the psychic power that comes from the worship, not the worship itself. So, you know, it's it, they, they don't feel like they have to worship the, the dead gods because they don't really have any reason to. The, uh, the way that they bring the dead gods back is by having thousands and thousands of civilians worship them. But Witness to the End is a worshipper, and he believes that worshipping the gods has value um, regardless, you know, independent of the energy it produces. So there is a lot of stuff we've got to do here, but we have to remember that it's not going to be something we can um, fork. So because of that, uh, we're not going to be able to ask him some of the most important things, or if we do ask him, he's going to just blow us off. Prime cannot so he says that he doesn't believe Henry was part of it. Which is not a lie. I don't know whether or not he ever lies. I don't think I've ever caught him in a lie. Don't. 
Another sinner at the end times or... I have a bad feeling about this. Citizens are sinners too. They don't pray hard enough. The syndicate do not compel them to pray hard enough. What? The gods are in it. Under the gaze of the gods. So here we've got some questions, and it's going to hit a couple of different points in the investigation. In the so he, although he tried to murder the council, the fact is that he wasn't planning on actually murdering them. He figured that Montserrat would have no problem killing off the demon, and that's exactly what happened. He just wanted to scare him. Sure. What? Who? Of the holy masters. Of course not. Why? Why were you butting heads with Montserrat so much? I need, to I need to know why you were clashing with a murder victim. Our leader was not following the holy mission. His focus was on the island sequences and not the gods. Sounds like he was straying from the path. Yes, I'm glad you understand. Our first priority is to prostrate ourselves before the gods, not to build ourselves a nice home. If our islands fail, then that is the will of the gods. If we trust in them, we will be saved. I don't like this. Of course not. Oh, the facts and the truth are not the same. Uh, this uh, witness and Montserrat were clashing all the time, and Montserrat uh, found witness voting against him in every single council meeting, no matter what the proposal. Surely this is a joke. What? The gods are watching us. Why? The gods are displeased. Montserrat is of the idea that the council is the important part, and the gods can come as you know as soon as the islands are stable. Uh, and Witness of the End does not agree with that. Fine is repulsive. Why? Why have you started taking calls in private? I don't know if I highlighted this, but at some point people started to talk about the fact that um, Witness of the End no longer talks to people in public. He he always goes to a private spot, whether it's on the telephone. You know, if he gets a telephone call, he'll leave the room to take it and that sort of stuff. What? Of course you know. Where? Where were you last night? I was here. Uh. And the architect came by. She was with me at the time of the killing. Yeah, how funny that the two people responsible for this were each other's alibis and were honestly giving each other alibis. Like, the Witness of the End does not know that Carmelina had her own thing going, and Carmelina does not know Witness of the End had his own thing going. But they both provided each other alibis quite accidentally. <laughs> He says, uh, I didn't expect her to come by. It was unusual. It's been quite, a, quite an age since we spent time together socially because we broke up 10 years ago. Was there anything odd about her behavior? We had a pleasant time. We shared some wine I'd been saving and prepared to say goodbye to paradise. I stepped out on my balcony to take a phone call from Grand, Mastel, Grand Marshal Akiko. It was fleeting. No more than five minutes. What time was the call? Shortly before death visited the island. So he left for five minutes. So for five minutes, he and Carmelina were not giving each other alibis. But there were no exits or entrances. There, Nobody left the building, nobody entered the building, at least not through any means that we've been able to detect. So even though they weren't in the same room, is five minutes really enough time to run all the way across the island and murder someone and then come back without being detected? Hmm. Got it. Thank you. Got it. I am still Crime cannot harm. Tell me about the moment the council died. I know you suffer from psychic death screams. <sighs> Doom dress can't be trusted with can't with patient confidentiality. Yes, every time a person dies, I am assailed by their psychic death screams. Doom Jazz prescribes me medication ah. for it. And, uh, yep, I heard it when the council died. I was brought to my knees by the pain. Now we're just mostly going through garbage here. This island is full of sinners. She, he says that there was something wrong with Akiko's call. And this is a sign that we're supposed to hang out with him until he, until he actually... Um, maybe, maybe he'll tell us. Let's find out. No, we have to hang out with him a few times before he tell us.
we're kind of just pushing through the investigator here. Is here. We're now talking about the device that we found. And uh, fact or a truth? the witness at the end says that he would never inflict death scream torture on anybody else. And either this is the first and only lie I've caught him in, or he's not responsible for that. But who else could it have been? Would Akiko have set up the Death Scream device, pointed it at herself, and woke a demon up when she didn't need to? She just needs to carry him around for a little bit. There's no reason for him to be awake. Got it. What? Maybe he did do it. Maybe that is a lie. <laughs> a god told me you went and carved off some flesh. What's up with that? Not your concern. I disagree. The islands die and I want to know why. Demons come to us and rot our triumphs. Do gods attract them? Does keeping one on the island make demonic invasions more likely? Why carve his flesh? That seems like a sin. I needed to study it. You can feel the cosmos when you look at the flesh of one of our lords. He is linked to the stars. Is he a magnet? I don't like this. Know anything about the demons on the island? I found this hidden bunker you'd been using to study a killer demon and oh ho, he broke it out. We're just gonna confront him with it. Let's see what he says. Right. Crime cannot hide. What? Of course not. So he basically says that uh, our, what we found is just nonsense. What? No, I think we're just pushing through the rest of this. I don't think that any, anything else is notable. Surely this is a joke. Surely this is a joke. Nope, that's it. So that wasn't nearly as long as I thought it would be. Um, that was only 12 minutes. But we now have talked a witness to the end. He is an important character, but because he's off on top of a building in the middle of nowhere, it's really challenging to uh, really get a feel for him as an important character. Um, I'm, I'm One of the only things about this game that I really don't like is just how uh, hidden away a lot of these characters are. Like, um, Akiko and the Red Herring are off in an island in the middle of nowhere. And it took me quite a while to even figure out that there was a place for me to go over there, because I wasn't, I wasn't using this, this little thing that we've got here. This is a handy way to track people down, but it's something that you don't use if you think that you're making good progress. And I was like, oh yeah, there's always somewhere to go. There's always something new to see and someone new to talk to. Uh, and, you know, because of that, I was going in different directions and I didn't end up seeing a lot of these people. Which is, uh, a little unfortunate, but nothing too bad. Anyhow, we are going to save the game and quit here for the day. You want to see the, um, the, the thing we get for that? The dead nebula starlight skin. More refreshing, more refreshing, more refreshing than a cosmic apocalypse. See you tomorrow.